in the last lecture we saw that what new products are coming out of biotechnology today we are going to see that what are the historical roots of biotechnology there is a grave misconception that people have started to use microorganisms very recently but if we go back in history what we see is that even in 6000 bc yani hazrat isa ki pedaish se 6000 saal qabl bhi people were using yeast to ferment beer and they had some idea that there is a difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration so egyptians were using anaerobic respiration of yeast to leaven bread and use mold to flavor cheese so in front of you you have a you have an image on the left hand side what you see is ek taza gundha hua aata hai it's, it's it's a dough which has been fre, uh, which has been freshly made lekin agar uske andar yeast add kar diya jaye to what you see after a few days wo is tarah phool jata hai today when you eat pizza when you eat naan when you eat several sort of bread we are using fermented dough for it and is there an advantage to it yes definitely for the people who are eating these sort of bread it's it's very easier to digest and the sort of problems that we see with uh, gluten intolerance today people who use these breads actually get them less as compared to the people who who use non fermented dough and in this image what you see is that there is an evidence that when in egypt they excavated various areas they found these sort of figurines which was showing bread making process at a larger scale so there is a very interesting case in front of us even in 350 bc people developed various sort of pregnancy tests so in today's world when a woman gets pregnant uh, we will take her to a hospital where they where she will get an ultrasound scan and then you would be able to tell where even in the third trimester whether it's a male baby or a female baby but in those days obviously there was no ultrasound how could we tell so they made a very interesting you can call a biosensor so if a pregnant woman would urinate on barley seeds and if it grows it would be a male child and if that woman or any woman pregnant woman pees on wheat and if the wheat grows it would be a female child now this test whether it was a witchcraft or true a team of scientists tried to try to prove it or disprove it in 1963 they carried out this test and what they found out that 70% of the time this test worked and you can attribute this difference in wheat or barley seeds to the elevated levels of estrogen and this is one example where we see that that people who were living without the modern means they had some sort of mechanisms to use live forms to to do these sort of analysis you what you watch here is basically wheat barley rye and oats by 400 bc people started to use salts to prevent food yani pickling ka process start ho gaya pretty much the way we make pickles today now we cannot say for certainty that these people understood that there are microorganisms inside the food and they are making it go bad but what they got the gist of it ki agar hum log salt se prevent nahi karenge to ultimately food will go bad now we know that what are hypertonic hypotonic or isotonic solutions and in future lectures we will discuss these processes in detail lekin tab tak logon ko itna zarur idea ho gaya tha ki there is something inside the food then european dark period came and various libraries were closed and subsequently islamic golden era began but because alcohol is prohibited prohibited in islam there was less progress on the front of wine development and somehow earlier period of biotechnology was associated with 
with the development of beer or wine. Ab suddenly, by 1665, people started to develop lenses. And what we saw that the first interesting book on microorganisms came out by Robert Hooke in 1665. And this is what you, what you are watching on the screen is the title of that book, Micrographia or some descriptions of minute bodies made by magnifying glasses. So you can see that this was the first best seller which was, which was scientific in, in its content. And subsequently what we also saw that Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek, who was a very fine lens maker, we consider him, we consider him father of microbiology. So this guy observed microscopic for the first time uh, microscopic single celled organisms. He made around 200 microscopes in that day and around 500 lenses with various magnifications, which was so fine that it was in 1957 a scientist named C.L. Strong was able to replicate it. Uh, people tried various ways but ultimately what we, they realized that if we join various pieces of lenses then we can make such 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 nice lenses ultimately limelight mein aa gaya by 1680 1690 and people started to accept it that there are microorganisms iske sath sath jaise hi logon ne dekha ke microorganisms exist karte hain uh, people also started to challenge what we used to call vitalism so the belief was that all living things have some sort of vital energy which flows through them and that's why they are alive. And second, no organic compound can be synthesized in the lab. So when Frederick Wooler synthesized urea, basically it was considered refutation of vitalism. And people started to believe, okay, living beings also work under some sort of chemicals or chemical or physical principles. Here comes a very interesting guy, Theodore Schwann, and he gave cell theory, all of, and which stated as all living things are composed of cells and cell products. So people in that in in those time people were just digesting that organic compounds can be synthesized. Theodore Schwann comes along and say that all living things are composed of cells and cell products. His career was very brief. He only worked actively in life sciences for five years because the guy I earlier presented, Frederick Wooler, basically they didn't, they believed in chemistry and what they believed was that yeast be ferment ho hai, ye, there is this reaction of some compounds in fruit juices with nitrogenous compounds and ultimately yeast beer or yeah. So they were not very happy with this idea that suddenly we are saying that there are these living beings inside those juices which are producing, uh, producing beer. The cartoon you are watching was actually they wanted to ridicule Theodore Schwann and they said that yeasts are peeing beer out and 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 basically they killed uh, Theodore Schwann's career. It was, it was a very sad incident. But, what, how, but somehow Theodore Schwann ye established kar gaya ke it's the microorganisms which live in these fruit juices and, and ultimately act. And then people came along like Rudolf Virchow, Virchow who basically gave this idea omnicellula e cellula that every cell arises from another cell. And this laid the foundation of biotechnology that we can, that all life is composed of microorganisms or cells. And ultimately, if we start playing around with these cells, we might be able to get out some products. Thank you.